Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Kim and today's video is me showing you how I have sewn up the Style Art Kennedy hoodie. Those of you that are already subscribed to my channel will know that I have made this hoodie before um, and I made it as per instructed by Style Arc. But this time around I've incorporated a few little design changes um, I didn't like the cuffs or the waistband design effects on the original so I swapped those out and I've used ribbon this time round and I found this ribbon uh, from the same site that I bought the fabric and I've been really pleased with how that looks. The other thing I also changed in making this second hoodie is I limited the amount of interfacing that I used and also some of the fabric um, and by Using less interfacing and a little bit less fabric, I found that it didn't compromise the look of the finished garment. Uh, it's still exactly the same and I feel happier about um, making that change. And you will see those um, changes in the video that is to follow. Now, um, I also decided to make this hoodie in two fabrics and I just wanted to make you aware that if you do decide to make um, this hoodie in two fabrics that you need to ensure that your primary fabric so this is my primary fabric this orange sweatshirt and you can see by the look of it it you know there's not a lot of stretch on I think that's the vertical but there's not a lot of stretch in this um, primary fabric that I've used um, but it's a great base fabric and I accompanied it with this accented fabric which is a lot softer and a lot stretchier so it stretches both ways and this accented fabric sits very well on this primary fabric um, because this will this supports this um, stretchier fabric very well now, obviously, if you decide to make your sweatshirt in one fabric, it's not a problem because obviously if you make it in a fabric like this, it will give you a more fluid, softer sweatshirt. Whereas if you made it in a firmer fabric, then you'll get a different look. It will look definitely firmer and more structured. Okay. Um, the other two things that I didn't mention in um, the video was my needle and stitch selection. So I used a 1490 stretch needle. It worked really well for this fabric, had no problems with it and the stitches were beautiful. And instead of using a straight stitch, I decided to use a stretch stitch. I think it was a stretch stitch. It just basically went back and forward, back and forward and progressively moved along. So when um, I stretched the seams to check the stitching, it had some give. So the, the stitch selection was, was great as well. So I don't see I'll have any problems with this garment going forward. So first of all, you have the external part of the hoodie, so you have the um, primary orange on the outside with the accent strip in the middle and inside it is opposite. So you have the um, accented fabric on the outside with a orange strip down the middle of the hoodie internally. So that's, that's the hoodie bit. All the back is orange. Okay. And the front is... Um, you come from the accented fabric from the hoodie down the front tabs then you have your pocket flap um, in the accented fabric and also the kangaroo pocket it's really nice um, then you have your orange primary fabric in the sleeves with your ribbon on the cuffs and on the waistband okay and we have the cord And we also have the snap poppers. Now I refer to snap poppers as um, rose gold in the video, but I think they're they were actually um, 
labelled up copper but they, they've got a nice warm colour to them. The tutorial will just take you through every step all the way to the end and I will see you at the other end. Enjoy! decided to make my sweatshirt in this orange fabric with the floral vine fabric as an accent. So they're the two fabrics I have chosen. Right, I'm going to go through each pattern piece, tell you which fabric I've chosen and any adjustments I've made to the pattern and why. So this is pattern piece number one, this is the back and I've cut it on the fold, I've cut it in the orange fabric, I have trimmed it down slightly so I have cut it effectively along the hemline because I have decided that I don't want to fold over my sweatshirt and put an elastic casing in I want to use the ribbon that I bought to go with it so this is the ribbon that will go with it so that's pattern piece number one pattern piece number two has been cut in the orange fabric as is I haven't made any adjustments to it so that's the the top front Pattern piece number three is the bottom front and um, this has also been cut on the fold in the orange fabric uh, and the adjustment I have made on this is to also trim that back to the hemline. Pattern piece number four is the actual kangaroo pocket and I have cut this in the contrast fabric I have um, trimmed it also just a little bit longer than the hemline because I know that I can cut that back if I need to so that's just a little bit shorter because that will also be stitched into the ribbon pattern piece number five is the front flap that sits in the middle of the top and the bottom front sections. I have only cut one of these, though it says to cut two. I have only cut one of these um, because I'm trying to reduce the amount of bulk. This will be fused and when I come to that part of the sewing process, I will then decide which fusible to use. This is pattern piece number six. These are the front tabs which sit in the, the top half of the sweatshirt and they are effectively the front opening and I've cut those out in the, the floral fabric and I've cut as is. Um, these also need fusing and I will decide when I come to that part of the sewing process which fusible I will be using. Now this is the hoodie section so you need to cut four of these and I have decided that I want the internal part of the hoodie in a different um, set of fabrics than the outside. So this will be the outer side of the hoodie uh, and I've cut two of those in the orange fabric and this pattern piece here number eight is the insert that goes around which effectively goes around the hoodie so you hit the this part of the hoodie with this at the back and then the second part of the hoodie so this has a sort of stripe effect in the back of the hoodie and I have decided to cut two of these pieces in the contrast and one of these pieces in the orange so I have a different internal to um, external um, colour blocking and it will become more apparent when we get to that stage. I haven't made any alterations to that pattern. Right, this is the sleeves. This is pattern piece number nine. I have made an adjustment to this because 
when I made the star hoodie it was too long in the sleeve for me and I made a note on my project sleeve to reduce the sleeve um, by one and a half to two inches so I have actually shortened this sleeve by one and a half inches so I've marked a one and a half inch um, section here and all I've done is literally join the bottom line up to the top line and then I've cut the piece out and when I've come to the side I have just trued that piece of fabric so it runs smoothly everything else is the same now this um, hoodie has two um, pieces to its sleeve so this is the the under sleeve and I've done exactly the same here I have marked one and a half inch um, area to reduce the sleeve by one and a half inches I have moved the bottom line up to the top line and I have cut the fabric out and trued this section um, so that sleeve is one and a half inches shorter and when the sleeve is finished that will also have the ribbon attached to it now there is a pattern piece number 11 but I have decided not to cut this out because this is the cuff and I'm not using cuffs on this version of my hoodie I'm going to be using um, this ribbon so um, we will go through that together when we get to that section so those are the pattern pieces and you've seen the fabrics that have been cut and we will now make a start on pulling it all together So here I'm going to make one of the, the hoodie pieces up. So it's just basically two hood pieces and an insert. And you just basically get your sections and you right sides together and pin matching the notches as you go so I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you what it looks like all pinned up before I stitch it right so here's the hoodie all pinned so you have um, one hood section here the middle insert and the other hood section here so it's all been nicely pinned I'm now going to stitch it uh, all together and I'm going to press it and top stitch. So here you can see the outer and the inner hoodie made up and what I now need to do is I need to um, stitch them together so right sides together so turn one of them out and pin them together so I'm just going to do that off camera and then I'll show you what that looks like before I start sewing right so here are the two hoodies pinned together so you can see one has been inserted into the other and all we need to do now now it's been pinned all we need to do is to stitch this um, opening of the hoodie just the opening so here are the two hoodie pieces inserted so we've got the um, internal and the external hoodie uh, and they've been stitched together um, through the opening and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press it but I'm just going to snip very slightly around this curve here Right, so the hoodie is now pressed. You've got the external hoodie and the internal hoodie. And um, the instructions say to now stitch around the opening of the hoodie a three centimetre ch uh, channel in. But before we do that, we need to put the eyelet in. The eyelet should only be on the outside. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to mark it all up. So get my pattern. Um, where it's got the eyelet, I have actually put a hole in the pattern. And I've got my pen, which 
um, it's heat, it's a heat one so it will disappear once ironed and I'm just going to line it up obviously excluding the seam allowance on that side but not this side and just put a little dot and there it is so you've got your little marker okay That I'm going to just reinforce it with some interfacing. So I have some S320 here and I'm just going to cut a little square and I'm just going to iron that um, in the inside and then I will do the, the hole and then I will do the eyelet. Right, so here you can see the first eyelet. So the eyelet has been put in nice and centralised. Um, it has its um, interface back in to make sure that it doesn't come loose. Um, I've also marked three centimetres from the edge, very, very lightly with a heat erasable pen. And you can see the eyelet sits nicely in between the edge and that line that I'm now going to stitch. So this is the hoodie now finished um, as far as the instructions go and we will come back to obviously attaching the hoodie to the main part of the sweatshirt but um, it's all nicely stitched, the channel, the eyelets, the outer and the, the inner section. So really pleased with that so we can park that up and we'll come back to that. The next step is to stitch the back to the front pieces, the top front pieces at the shoulder seams. So what I'd like to do is before I stitch those, I just get some tape. So I've got some cotton tape and I like to stitch that um, into the shoulder and what the cotton tape does is it just keeps that area nice and firm so it doesn't um, become stretched over time it will hold its shape right so here um, it is with the the shoulder stitch so you can see the the cotton tape um, it's nice and tight it's not going to stretch over time and I've also overlocked it as well so that that bit is now finished. It says to stitch together the outer edge of the hoodie. So this is the, the outer one. And to stitch it to the front and the back sections that we've just done. So I've pinned it so you can see it. And now I'm going to stitch it. Right, so now that the, the outer hoodie has been stitched to... The neckline of the front and back. The instructions are asking you to now um, fold over the hemline on the inner hoodie and attach it to that sewn edge. So you can see that I've already made a start and you just need to just take it slowly, fold over the seam allowance which is three eighths of an inch and literally push push up that sewn edge hold it down and just pin so I always start from the outer edge so that I know how much I need to just ease the rest of it in Once you're happy with how um, you have pinned the inner hoodie onto the front and back, you um, can now stitch and the instructions say to stitch from 
from the outside three millimeters three millimeters from the edge um, I personally don't think it matters and I I'm going to do it from the inside so I can watch um, so I can watch this fabric and make sure that it stays close to my original stitch line. Right, so that's the hoodie now attached. Doesn't she look lovely? So next we're going to work on the front tabs. The tabs are the two plackets in effect that go down the front and they have little press right stuff. so i thought i'd show you how i've done the interfacing on one of the tabs so the tab originally is just um a rectangular piece of fabric and i've interfaced it in a certain way so i have marked it out so you can see exactly how i've done it Obviously, you don't need to mark it out like this. It's just so that you can see what I've done. So I have um, put in the, the seam allowance. So these are the two sides with the seam allowance, and it's three-eighths of an inch. And one only one side has been interfaced, but I've interfaced it in a certain way. So I have found some stiffer interfacing, and I've just made just cut a tiny tiny little strip and there's no stretch in this and I have placed this in the center of the tab all the way down the middle and in this tab um, there will be press studs and I place this all the way down because when we do come to putting the press studs in I know that it will they will fall somewhere along that line and I need to make sure that there's a thicker piece of interfacing in the tab so the press studs don't work loose over time. So once that in, that's in, I have then put an additional piece of interfacing over that. So this stiffer interfacing sits underneath and there's a stretchier interfacing that just sits on top which goes from the centre of the tab to the seam allowance. And this um, this um, interface is a little more stretching. It has a little bit more give. And it's obviously very, very light. But when this is um, sandwiched together and sewn in, you just get the right type of stiffness. You don't want it too stiff. You still want it fluid. And you really want it to match the weight of your um, orange fabric so and that does and that and that's quite a nice feel to it and it goes quite well with the thickness of the orange um, uh, sweatshirt fabric so now I'm going to stitch it now I'm going to stitch it a little bit different from how they instruct because what I want is I want a really tight edge to my sweatshirt so I will work through each stage for you and I will come back so to start with, what I've done is I have pinned this front tab to the front of our already partially made up hoodie. And I have started from the base of the tab and worked my way up. So we do have quite a bit of um, fabric free here, which is good. So I'm going to stitch that on at three eighths of an inch. So our front tab has now been stitched on one side. So you get your iron, just push that seam allowance towards the center of that front tab. That's nice and flat. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to ensure that this area here um, is nice and tight so when it's folded over you get a nice neat and aligned edge so I've got my iron and I'm just going to go through a process of ironing it so just press your seam allowance down that you've just stitched okay then we have the, the top here and what we're going to do is we're just going to pull, 
pull it down. Now what I do is when I pull it down, I just pull it a little bit more than um, I would do uh, on a, a woven fabric because this has got stretch. We don't want it springing up. So I just pull it so it's nice and tight. So it really hugs that edge there. So it's nice, it's nice and smooth. And once you've got that, you can then pin it down. Okay. And, and then you can fold over your tab to ensure that you've got a nice tight edge. All about pressing at this stage. Okay, so just to make sure that it is straight, just flip this over to sit on top and align this edge to the already stitched line. And if you're happy with it and you feel that that's, that's nice and tight from the back and also from the front, then you can um, start to remove any excess here any excess um down this already stitched line and then when you've done all of that fold it back over and repin it and then go to your machine and stitch so this is what it looks like completed so you've got a really nice tight clean edge here and you just need to do the other side i haven't put in the stud markings on the tab I usually like to do that at the end and I like to um, place them where I think they will suit the um, garment once it's made up so I will finish the other tab and then we will move on so this is your two front tabs now finished nicely stitched um, now you just need to move the right over to the left so the right sits on top of the left and then just pin the bottom and just take it to your machine and put some stage stitches in and that's the front tabs finished right so here we have our front pocket flap the instructions tell you to cut two of these and to inface them and last time I made this I found this flap it didn't serve any purpose at all it was just a design feature so what I'm doing this time is I'm reducing as much bulk as I can so I've only cut one piece and as you can see I've added some interfacing here at the end little strip of interfacing and the same at the other end and I'm just going to now add some to the bottom now when I iron on interfacing I actually use um, grease proof paper so that if it sticks, it just literally peels off greaseproof paper. So that's it. So it doesn't mess up your ironing board. So just trim any excess away. So that is basically the the pocket flap um, stiffened slightly. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to overlock the sides and then I'm going to um, fold them over and stitch them down. And that's right, so that's the pocket flap um, stitch. So um, as you can see, it's been overlocked and folded over. There's absolutely no interfacing in the middle. It's just those strips of interfacing around the edge to give it some firmness. And it's been stitched all around to keep all of that sort of the frame of the flat nice and firm. This 
this top bit will obviously be sewn into the the top and bottom pieces of the front uh, and I think that will work really well so that's the pocket flap finished so here is the pocket the kangaroo pocket so this is pretty straightforward to prepare so what I've done is I have uh, turned it over I've applied some of my um, strip interfacing to the edges only uh, as you can see here and I have then overlocked that edge um, either side and the reason why I've used the interfacing just on the pockets is or the openings of the pockets is because I want to make sure that these um, openings don't become um, wobbly after time you know they go they stretch out and um, they don't look very nice so by putting interfacing in, in them in those openings it will just hold that area quite firm um, and the rest of it's stretchy so that's not a problem so it's just to just to keep those openings nice and um, structured and in place so once they um, the sides were overlocked I folded over by three eighths of an inch and then as instructed I top stitched just the opening so on the pattern you get the notches which tell you where the opening of the pocket is so just make a note of those and all I've done then is top stitched so that is the pocket so we now have our pocket and we need to now position this on the bottom half of our sweatshirt so we've got you've got four notches here so you just use these two here um, mine doesn't fit exactly but I'm not that bothered and then just literally ensure that it is in the middle of your bottom front section once you've got it in the middle just pin it in place because what we're going to do now is we're just going to stitch literally from the the top of the opening here across and down and then from the bottom of the pocket openings down just to set the pocket in place okay so now the kangaroo pocket has been stitched onto the front we can start building up the layers so we need to put in the pocket flap which sits in between these two outer notches I'm going to start pinning it all to secure it ready for stitching So now you get the front with the front flaps on. So with right sides facing, you need to ensure that these two flaps here are where these two notches are on the pocket flap. So position those first. See all the bulk there? So that's what we were trying to reduce throughout this whole sewing process. Right. And just carry on pinning. So once it's all pinned, you can then stitch all of those layers together. So here is the the front and back now stitched together and I've overlocked and the front looks like this. So it, it's all starting to come together really nicely now.
So I have um, this ribbon which I bought from myfabrics.co.uk and it is 140 centimetres long which should be enough to do both your waist and your cuffs. Now I've got quite big hips so I ordered two of these because I think I will need to use the two. So I've unravelled the first one and I have placed this around my hips um, and just decided when it feels comfortable. I obviously don't want it too tight because I want it to be able to feel comfortable on the hips without it riding up so I have cut it accordingly and what I'm going to do now is um, I'm just going to cut that edge a bit straighter and then I'm going to stitch it stitch it down right so, so to start with I've um, attached it um, I've stitched it and I've overlocked it and I have this little tail at the end and I don't want to just snip it because I know over time that will fray. I've snipped it at the top because that's going to be stitched into the, the hemline of the sweatshirt. So I'm just basically going to hide this tail into that sweatshirt overlocking. Right, so there she is, and that's what she looks from the outside. Yeah. So this is my ribbon, and I've got to fit my ribbon into my sweatshirt. So as you can see, the ribbon is definitely shorter, um, not as wide, sorry, as the sweatshirt, but you've got to fit that in. So I'm going to split it into quarters. I have also placed the stitched piece um, so it sits at the back uh, out of sight because you don't want it at the front to the side where there's no no other stitching so I'm going to split it into quarters and the way I do this is I just literally fold it in half and I mark all of the areas so both ends middle there middle on the other side doesn't have to be exact exact and I do the same for the sweatshirt so I just fold it over and Just mark it so it's split into quarters. Now I've used um, this heat pen so once it's ironed all of those markings will disappear. Right so here you can see um, the ribbon the right side of the ribbon has been placed onto the right side of the sweatshirt and I've already started to pin and I'm just, I've just got my um, markings here. So I've got one in the middle of the sweatshirt and I have got another one here. So I just need to stretch that over and pin that down. And then what you're trying to do is you're trying to literally stretch the, the ribbon to fit into the the hem of the sweatshirt so if you give it a good stretch you can see that fits quite nicely so so give it a good stretch and then literally pin it in sections and just take your time with no rush Thank you. 
and you can pin as much as you want. Obviously, once it's under the, the machine, it will you can stretch it um, within each of those sections anyway. So I am happy with that. So it's all being pinned quite nicely. And I thought I would just show you this, the front section, because you've also got the front kangaroo pocket in here as well. So you need to make sure that you catch all of that into it sandwiched in between the ribbon and um, the rest of the sweatshirt so as before just give it a good old stretch and then pin it down and I just sort of stretch each section and this makes it all nice and even around the whole of the sweatshirt Now I've marked this um, into quarters. If you want, you can mark this as many times as you want. So if you think the quarters are too big, just mark it again and make it eighths for an instant. So it makes the markings, the gap between the markings smaller and easier for you to manipulate the fabric because you can see those markings better. Obviously, I've been um, doing this sort of thing for a while, so I feel comfortable just doing it every quarter. So that is it, basically. So I'm now going to take this to the machine. So this is now the ribbon stitched to the bottom of the sweatshirt. It looks really nice. I was going to top stitch, but I don't think I will. Um, what I have done is I have made sure that um, this this stitching, as you can see here, has all been um, overlocked. And when I pressed it, I pressed it up. And it took a bit of time, but I think it actually looks okay as it is. I'm not going to going to top stitch it at all. So. So now we're going to start working on the sleeve. Now when I cut out the two sleeve patterns, I shortened them by an inch and a half. So this is why they're folded over here, because that area there is an inch and a half and I've just shortened them. Um, I also um, decided that I was going to use ribbon on the cuffs instead of having a, a fabric cuff made up and what I didn't do at the time was I I didn't cut off this section here from the pattern this section here is where you have the split and the cuff will go on and the split just gives you that area in your cuff sort of your area in your cuff this sort of split here uh, and because I'm using ribbon I don't need that so I have actually removed them from the sleeve okay so they're my two pattern pieces and all you need to do with them now is you just need to stitch both sides up and put the ribbon on so when I did the ribbon I got the ribbon and I just literally placed it around my wrist and cut um, the width that I quite I liked I didn't want it too tight um, and that felt quite comfortable and you can get it over the hand quite easily so I went off and stitched that overlocked it as I did with the waistband don't forget when you're finishing off your cuff to um, put the tail of the overlocking thread into the seam because you don't want that fraying don't want to just cut it because it will fray. You don't need to go very far. And there she is. And what I thought I would just show you before we finish off the sleeve section is 
I think when you put this, the ribbon um, onto the sleeve, just put um, this, turn the sleeve right side in and the cuff right side together. Because when the, the cuff is inside the sleeve, when you're trying to stretch it, it's easier to stretch the cuff out rather than try and um, do it the other way around and have the cuff on the outside because there's obviously more stretch in the cuff fabric than there is in the, the actual sweatshirt fabric. So just go around just stretch it so you don't have to mark it just stretch it it's a small area and then once you've pinned it enough and you're happy you can then take that to your machine and stitch it and you'll end up with your cuff all nicely stitched and and overlocked or zigzagged now when it comes out because you have stretched it on your machine it might look a bit baggy don't worry about that because when you apply heat to anything with elastic in it it will instinctively just shrink down so now we've come to the stage where we're going to inset the sleeves. So first of all, get your hoodie and turn it wrong side out and ensure that your sleeve is turned right side out. There are various notches in the sleeve and in the hoodie that you need to align when you put the sleeve in. Um, so first of all, um, I, I have marked these, but you would have done these when um, you cut them out. So you would have one here and and one here, etc. And there's a, another one on the other side. Um, so just make sure that you've got all of your notches. So to start with, what I do is when I ins insert a sleeve, I will put my sleeve inside my garment so that they are right sides together. So I'm going to join the side seam to the back of the sleeve. Now I do use a lot of pins in sleeves. So once I've got that first part of the sleeve and the hoodie pinned I then move to all of the notches so we have a notch here on the sweatshirt and there's one here this is the the, the back seam of the sleeve so just tally those up and then pin either side It. then move on to the next notch now this is the the top of the sleeve and this needs to marry up with the the shoulder seam so I'm just going to place those right sides together and pin either side and I do like the shoulder seam to point to the back of the garment Okay, so we're moving around again. We've got the last notch here. There's one on the sleeve and obviously one on the sweatshirt. So just marry those up as well. And then once all the, the notches have been matched, you just then ease the sleeve into the sweatshirt. Now there's a bit of stretch, not a lot. You just literally pull it until you're happy and then just keep pinning
Right, the sleeves are now in and they've gone in really well. So I'm going to move on to putting the cord into the hoodie. Right, so now the sleeves are finished, I'm just going to move on to the next step by putting the, the hoodie cord through the channel. So I'm just going to use this large safety pin. push it through so that's the cord in so all we need to do now is um, put some snap poppers in the front So here is the, the front of the sweatshirt finish. So I've done the front tabs with the presser studs and um, I had videoed this before but my head got in the way so much that I decided, I've decided now to just redo this section so that you can see it properly. So you can see here I've got four presser studs and they open up lovely and you've got the ones underneath. And the pattern actually suggests that you use three. Now I've decided with my pattern I want to use four and because of the way that I interfaced these tabs you can actually put in as many as you want. So I've decided on four because I just think it's, it just feels more evenly spaced. Okay so... So to start with, I'm going to measure. So what I did was I just really um, got myself some pins. So I've got four presser stars. I've got four pins. And I just thought, right, I'll go, I'll go for, um, an inch and a half from the bottom. And then maybe three inches up from there. So I've done a three inch space. Okay. So as you can see already, I've got a huge gap still here. So that's not, that's not going to work. So still with my inch and a half from the bottom, I'm actually just going to move it up a tad by two eighths of an inch. So it's going to end up being 3.2 inches. And I feel that's that's nicer spacing. So I'm going to um, settle for that. And then what I'm also going to do is get my ruler so I get a nice straight line. So I've got my line right down the middle. And where those pins are, I'm just going to put a little mark with my heat erasable pen. Okay, so hopefully you can, you can see those little marks that I've made. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hole punch. So I've got my hole punch here and I'm basically just going to hole punch exactly where I put those holes. I'll just take my first pin out, get my hole punch, clip. That's my first hole, second hole. You just keep carrying on until they're all done.
Right, so they're my four holes. And what I do next to make sure that they all line up for the bottom presser studs is I just literally use my erasable pen and go through those holes to the bottom half. So you can see that they've come through quite nicely and then I will just go and hole punch those as well. Right, perfect. So they're all my holes, so now I can put my presser studs in. So I thought I'd just go through the die set with you because I have, I've got a die set um, already, so I thought I would use that. You do not need a die set to put these presser studs in. You can buy um, a manual press and it looks very similar to, to this and it will just enable you to press each of these into place. It's just that because I've got the die set, I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to explain how it works. So you have four parts to your die set, which correspond to four parts of your presser studs. And the top one, number one, and I've numbered them to make it easier for me. So I know that this one will go into number one. Um, this will go into number two, three, four. This one sits at the top. Okay. So therefore you know that um, that sits at the top and you need to put the corresponding one underneath. So those two work together and then those two work together. Okay. And each presser, each sorry, die part works as two separate. So this will sit in the bottom of that part of the die set. And this one will sit um, in here, which is number two, and it just gets pressed in. And then when you have the fabric in between, they will then just push together and the fabric will be sandwiched in between those two presser stud elements. And the same goes for these two so this one will sit on the base there and this one will then sit on this third one and it just literally pops in there so these two base ones just sit at the bottom of the green machine and the this one will then just screw in to the top and all you need to do is once you've got all of your um, parts together, just make sure that you put the fabric the right way um, in between these presser so studs. First of all, I'm going to start off with the bottom, the bottom tab. So we've already made our holes. So this one here sits on the bottom. So that will go into this part of the die set like that. And I just slot that into my machine. And number three is a smaller stunted one. And literally you just push that in to that part of the die set. And that part actually gets screwed in. So I'm just going to screw that in great so it's ready to go so once you've got those in and you've got each of your studs in place you just go and find the hole that you've made in your fabric and you just push that part of your stud through the fabric so it pops out and you can see it and then you can press the two together. Okay, and that's the first one done, or the third one. And that's nice and tight. So you just carry on and do and do the last one. So I'm just going to pop that on. The little stunted one, 
push that into the other section of the die, find my little hole that I've made, push that through the fabric and press. Great. So that's the bottom part of my front tab done. So now I can work on the top. So I need to just swap out these parts of the die set. Right, so once you've got your last two parts of your die set in, you can then put the last two um, elements of your studs in. So the, the bottom one goes in the base. It just sits in there. And then you have this presser, the snap one, that sits in the, the top. Sometimes this can be a bit, bit fiddly to put in, but just... If you do put it in the wrong way, you, well, you won't be able to put it in. There's only one way you can put it in. So if you um, need to, just make sure it, it fits in snugly and they're both both in the, the green machine. Now, just be aware that once you have your, bot your button part of your snap in your machine, so this part, you need to flip your fabric over because obviously that goes there so you need to flip it over you push the stem of that button through the hole that you've made and then you compress the two pieces together okay and there you have it perfect so you now have three studs and then you just carry on and you just do the last one. Right, so there she is with all of her press studs in place. Um, the rose gold works really well with the orange. And I'm glad I did the four press studs. I think they work really, really nice. And, and that is her finish. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope it's inspired you to maybe have a go at making this hoodie yourself. It's a really lovely hoodie. And uh, I can see myself making more of these in the future. This is my last make of 2023. And I think I finished on a positive. So I will happily go into 2024 and start my, my new sewing projects for that year. So I will say goodbye now. And I will see you very shortly. So take care. Bye.